Friends, I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this message for Sunday, uh, July 19th. We're working with uh, the sermon series Unraveled, and today we're looking at the unraveling of our worldview when we think of the world in simplistic, dualistic ways. And so today the invitation is to look beyond the ways we normally divide the world into the way that God sees the world and sees us. Uh, last week there was an article that was beautiful uh, in the Batavian about a sign that we have on the front lawn of the church saying God loves everyone no exceptions and it's a beautiful rainbow sign uh, trying to uh, share the love of God with all who walk by or drive by uh, most people commented in positive ways but there was one comment where someone said what about ped a pedophile there's always that challenge. People feel the need to challenge that uh, unconditional love by saying, well, what about Hitler? What about Osama bin Laden? What about people that don't deserve love? Um, and I know the desire behind it is that desire to limit God's love to what we think is appropriate versus uh, what, what God thinks as appropriate uh, for love and we misunderstand uh, we confuse being lovable with being loved by God uh, and so we have a hard time believing that we are lovable as a result because we know our own faults we know our own mistakes and so today I invite you to think about this hopefully the unraveling of that mindset where we divide the world into uh, good versus evil, wrong versus right, uh, winners versus losers, those who follow the rules, those who break them, uh, into this way of seeing the world in a more holistic, uh, complete way. And so uh, a couple of people came to my mind uh, that have helped me uh, think through this and why this is important. One of them is a man by the name of Marshall Rosenberg, who's written many books, but uh, this one uh, is called Nonviolent Communication, A Language of Life. Uh, and he uh, uses also the work of Walter Wink, who was a theologian, thinking about nonviolence and how we could move from this world that divides things into you know, right and wrong, where some people need to be punished while others be rewarded, into a world where it is more uh, open and more complex as it is truly uh, the way of life. And so uh, Marshall says, Marshall Rosenberg says, for thousands of years we've been operating under this system that says that people who do bad, th bad deeds are evil. Indeed, that human beings are basically evil. According to this way of thinking, a few people have evolved. It is up to them to be the authorities and control the others. And the way you control people, given that our nature is evil and selfish, is through a system of justice in which people who behave in a good manner get rewarded, uh, while those who are evil are made to suffer. In order to see such a system as fair, one has to believe that both sides deserve what they get. And that's you know where the problem uh, comes for us as societies. Walt, he quotes Walter Wink, uh, thinking that it estimates that violence has been the social norm for about 8,000 years. That's when a myth evolved that the world was created by a heroic, virtuous male god who defeated an evil female goddess. From that point on, we've had the image of the good guys killing the bad guys, and that has evolved into retributive justice. And so instead of restorative justice, we've uh, believed in this system where uh, those who uh, are bad get punished and those who are good get rewarded. And he said, not every culture has been exposed to it, but unfortunately, most have. And so how do we move beyond this uh, kind of mindset? And the invitation is to look at the example of Jesus today in the story from Luke 19. And so let's listen to this story. Jesus enters Jericho and seems only to be passing through. Living in Jericho is a man named Zacchaeus. He's the head tax collector and he is very rich. He is also very short. 
He wants to see Jesus as he passes through the center of town, but he can't get a glimpse because the, the crowd blocks his view. So he runs ahead of the crowd and climbs up into a sycamore tree so that he can see Jesus when he passes beneath him. Jesus comes along and looks up into the tree, and there he sees Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, hurry down from that tree because I need to stay at your house tonight. Zacchaeus scrambles down and joyfully brings Jesus back to his house. Now the crowd sees this, and they're upset. Jesus has become the house guest of this fellow who is a notorious sinner? Lord, I'm giving half of my goods to the poor, and whomever I have cheated, I will pay back four times what I took. Today, liberation has come to this house, since even Zacchaeus is living as a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to liberate the lost. So in this story, we hear about Jesus doing the unthinkable. People wouldn't have expected that from a respected rabbi to go and uh, reach out to a tax collector. He was not just an, any tax collector, he was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And the text tells us about Zacchaeus being uh, short. Uh, another reminder that he was just small in stature to indicate his smallness of spirit. So everything about this man was wrong. But Jesus reaches out to him the same, reaches out with love, with grace. It doesn't, it doesn't start with uh, the conversion. It doesn't start with Zacchaeus turning away from his old ways. It's actually the opposite. Uh, Jesus accepts Zacchaeus for where he is right there in that moment and shows him that grace he says to him you know come down and i must i must stay down i must stay at your house uh, hurry and come down for i must stay at your house today jesus doesn't expect uh, doesn't expect to visit zacchaeus after he has become a good person jesus visits him just as he was and that's how grace works and that's why we have a hard time with it because we confuse being lovable with being loved. We confuse grace with rules and rewards with being good. And so we have to, we always have that sense that we have to earn it and others have to earn it. And, but if we're really honest with ourselves, that model has not served us for a long, long time. It has not served to change the world into uh, the ways of love. It has not helped us. And it really uh, leaves us always feeling unsatisfied or dissatisfied in life. A sense that we are not good enough. We're never good enough. Life is never good enough for us. There's always something bothering us. There's always something that's not working. And we get into this mentality of all or nothing. And so the invitation is to look at how Jesus went into the house of the tax collector against the norms of his day, against the expectations of the people. He saw the potential in this man before the man saw it in himself. He saw in him the image of God, even though it was tarnished, even though it was covered up with all of his bad deeds, there was still that goodness inside of him. And so Jesus shows us the path on the cross. Uh, today we have a cross here uh, made in El Salvador. I love this cross. I have, I have many crosses, but this one has the image of the world on it, the globe. Um, and I, I love that it is a circle and reminding us that there are no corners, there are no divisions of right and left. We try to make it that way, but that's not how, the, how God sees the world. God sees us from that higher perspective, that deeper place. And uh, so the invitation is to move into that, to move out of those times when, when you're trying to divide the world into, these, uh, into judgments of right and wrong. Uh, step, take a step back. Try to see it as God sees it. Try to see the situation, the person you're dealing with from that perspective. Complex, uh, full of potential possibilities beyond what we imagine. 
even though we have yes we have to to hold people accountable we have to do things right but we do not want to confuse that with what brings transformation uh, we may have to take measures to protect ourselves to protect our communities but we always have to leave room for uh, restoration. We always have to leave room for grace, for that person, for that situation to be healed. We have to apply the measure of, of grace in order for us to find God's grace in our hearts. We have to let go of those ex expectations of ourselves. And so in the same way, um, the invitation is to open to this unraveling of these mindsets and uh, to think about Jesus and his cross and the model of unconditional love that he showed on the cross. And I love in chapter 23 of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says uh, on the cross, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He asks for forgiveness for those who wronged him. Again, seeing things from that higher perspective. Did he approve of what they did? Absolutely not. Did he try to resist it and change it? Yes. But it didn't mean that he was going to do it with the ways of hate, of anger, of fear. And so I want to give you a couple of examples to ponder today. One is from uh, the book uh, by Marshall Rosenberg. Um, he tells about a time when he went to a Palestinian refugee camp to speak about nonviolent communications to uh, communication to a group of uh, refugee men. And when they heard that he was American, uh, they started whispering about him. And then finally, uh, they started shouting, murderer, assassin, child killer. And instead of responding in the typical fashion of running away from it, he applied his method of uh, observing with no judgment, of listening to the needs and feelings that are being presented, of talking about a solution in a way that is life-giving. And so the dialogue goes back and forth between him and one of the people uh, really upset. And Rosenberg acknowledges the needs, the feelings of that man and the hurt, uh, not agreeing with him, but really affirming where he is and listening to what is happening within that man. And so at the end of the day, uh, they ended up having dinner together. So transformation happens when we listen, when we can relate to others in new ways, in ways that are full of grace. And the other example I wanna share with you is from Emmanuel Acho, who has a, a show on uh, YouTube called Uncomfortable Com Conversations with a Black Man. It's a great uh, show that he started to deal with these issues of racism where we have a hard time speaking to each other, where we divide ourselves and separate and see ourselves as not connected in the ways God sees us. And so, uh, so he builds bridges in this show and helps people express feelings and talk about needs and talk about uh, perceptions or misperceptions. I invite you to watch it. And so today, um, I want to invite you to consider what this story means for you, what this unraveling of the dualistic mindset means from moving away from those mindsets where we are divided to really seeing the world as a whole, to seeing others are, are as complex, to seeing ourselves as worthy of love as much as uh, we make mistakes and have shadows, we still have that grace within us that cannot be taken away and it cannot be taken away from others either and so uh, i want to invite you to pray this prayer this week or in the days to come when you think about those divisions when you find yourself judging and separating is to say god help me to see this person or situation not as good or evil but through your heart but through your heart and so you could make the sign of the cross reminding yourself of that um, grace, that unconditional love that is required for those moments. So not to see things are as right or wrong, not to see them in dualistic ways, a good versus evil, but to see them through the heart, to see them as God sees them. So friends, it's a challenge. It is not easy, uh, but I know it is the work of our lives. It is the invitation of Christ for each of us. Amen.